Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I didn't feel like putting up the background today, so all you get is me. I've actually been putting off this video for a long time because I'm scared. I've made seitan once before in my life, and it was okay, like it was edible, but definitely not worth all the effort I put into it. So I've been putting it off for that reason, and also because for some reason my DIY videos don't do very well, so it's like, there's not even a good reward at the end. However, I just want to be able to make a good seitan steak. I feel like it's like the next level in my vegan journey just to be able to do such a thing. So here we are. I will be using someone else's recipe and I will leave their link down below so you can go check it out, maybe make a seitan steak of your own. I have almost all the ingredients. The only thing I'm missing is Worcestershire sauce because uh, there was no vegan Worcestershire, <laughs> Worcestershire sauce at the supermarket near my house. Uh, if you guys don't know, regular Worcestershire sauce includes anchovies and obviously I don't want to eat anchovies. So yeah, I'm just going to replace it with like a little bit more soy sauce and considering that there is like a shit ton of ingredients in this seitan, I'm hoping it doesn't make too much of a difference. Without further ado, let's head down to my kitchen and give this a good old try. Now I'm halving this recipe simply because I'm not confident in my own skills, but the recipe is from thecuriouschickpea.com. It seems like a good recipe, even though I've never seen this blog before. Um, it looks like a popular one, so I'm crossing my fingers. So let me gather the ingredients and show you what I got. Going down the list, we have olive oil. This is shipped straight from Greece, real bougie shit. Red onion, don't have a red onion, but I have this one. Some garlic. Some vegetable broth. I use this better than bouillon. This is the most amazing vegetable bouillon I've ever used in my life and I don't think I'll ever change. We don't have red wine, but we have like cooking red wine. Does anyone know if there's a huge difference if you cook with cooking wine versus regular wine? I don't know, but this one I'm gonna use. Black beans don't have, but I do have pinto beans and I feel like that won't make a huge difference considering I'm only gonna be adding like a quarter cup. Soy sauce, I have tamari right here. Don't have Worcestershire sauce, tomato paste right there. And the two most important things, the things that took me a while to get because supermarkets are kind of whack right now. We have some chickpea flour right here and we have some vital wheat gluten. This is the shit. This is the stuff that makes the stuff. Honestly, seitan is my favorite meat substitution. It is so high in protein and so yummy. The only downside is a lot of people are allergic to gluten or they're sensitive to gluten. Thank dear baby Jesus that I do not have that problem. If you do, I am so sorry. Sips kombucha. Yo, this outfit pairs very well with kombucha. Don't you think? I feel like your hippie mom. Okay. I guess it's time to start. <clears throat> oh, hi, doggy. Doggy, you wanna say hi to the camera? Come here. Look who we have with us in the kitchen today. Say hi, boy. Hi. Oh, I love you so much. Okay, I'll put you down. First, we chop and cook up onion and garlic. Now, I'm having the recipe. I better remember that for the whole recipe. Have you ever forgotten that you were having or doubling something and like totally mess up the measurements? Because I have. Okay, let's chop up our onion. Try not to cry. Now, it's gonna get blended up, so I guess it doesn't matter how I chop it, but I'm gonna chop it small-ish just so it cooks faster, you know? Now our little garlics. Maybe I'll just, yeah. I'll just do two. A little bit of oil and our onion and garlic. We're gonna be productive while that's cooking. We're gonna put all our other wet ingredients into a blender. Water. This is supposed to be our vegetable broth, so I'm just gonna put water and like a little bit of bouillon. <sighs> oh yeah, there we go. We have our cooking wine next. I'm definitely gonna taste this. There's no, like, does it taste like really bad? Is that why is it cooking wine? And if it tastes really bad, then how could it taste good in the food? It doesn't smell like wine at all. <laughs> it's like if you took wine, removed all the flavor, and then added scoops of salt. I don't know if this is a good idea, but it's all I have, so. Also, it's pink, not red. I would have to be desperate to drink that. I don't, you know what? No, I would have to be 
an alcoholic. Like, I, I, I could probably never drink that. It literally tastes like salt water. If ocean water tasted slightly like wine, that's what it tastes like. Nasty. Some beans. I feel like a sorcerer or a witch or something. What else has this many ingredients and isn't a spell? That's my question. Some olive oil and some soy sauce. And then I'm supposed to add the Worcestershire sauce. But again, I said I don't have that. So I think I'm just gonna put a splash of liquid smoke. Now at this point, I've made enough changes to the recipe that if it tastes bad, it is not Curious Chickpea's fault. But I don't think I'm doing anything that would make it taste bad yet. My onions and garlic are going in. It smells very garlicky. It smells like a hibachi steakhouse, actually. I'm literally gonna put like a drop. <gasps> That's it. Tomato paste. And salt. I don't know why I need salt after all that soy sauce, but whatever. And tomato paste, tomato paste is pretty salty too. And, ch and vegetable broth, probably didn't need salt. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Ooh, it smells very like uh, barbecue-y <sighs> with a hint of strange. Now we have the delightful task of mixing the dry and wet ingredients, the dry ingredients being the seitan and chickpea flour. I'm gonna weigh them with a scale so I don't get more measuring cups dirty. If you don't do that, try it. It, it makes your life easier, less dishes. It's so little chickpea flour. Is it like actually necessary? I, I don't know. Mmm, delicious. Is this enough wet? Oh, it looks kind of like seitan or like wet bread, which is basically what seitan is. Oh, it's so fluffy. Oh, it's such an odd texture. Oh my God, it's such an odd texture. How long do I have to need this? Three minutes. Ooh. Flashbacks to me trying to make bread the beginning of quarantine. Remember that? It's so wet. It also reminds me of, it smells a lot like tomatoes, even though I didn't add that much tomato. My goal for this seitan is it to not be spongy. Like, have you ever had spongy seitan? It's not the worst, but it's not pleasant. Like, I want it to be chewy and delicious. Right now, it's definitely spongy, but like, also, I haven't cooked it yet, so it can be redeemed. Only time will tell. Also, I've decided to put all these like DIY videos in a playlist called Wifey Shit. So if you're interested, if you're one of the few people on my channel who's interested in like when I make things like this, then look underneath the playlist Wifey Shit. Not much has changed. It's still pretty sticky. It looks like this. Yeah, I know my hands look gross, but it says to let it rest for five minutes. So I'm just gonna let it chill out for five minutes and I hope it looks different when I get back. Okay, it's been five minutes. Apparently we need again, thankfully, because I was like, this, uh, this looks too soft right now. I guess we... <sighs> hey Siri, set an alarm for three more minutes. I set an alarm for 3 p.m. Not three. I will see you when I'm done. Okay, now we're done kneading, finally. And this is how the meat look like. The meat, the meat, whatever. Ta-da! Gross. Now we divide this thing into three sections. Wrap each section with foil and steam it. Oh, that's satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna get the foil. That looks steaky, right? Wrap. Here are my three steaks. They're definitely different shapes, but I mean, isn't that, you know, the same with regular steaks? And I'm putting them in a steamer basket. And we're putting it on a pot of boiling water, getting a lid and saying bye for 35 minutes. See you then. Woo, steamy. I think you're supposed to grill it, but I don't have a grill right now, so I'm just gonna cook it in a little frying pan to get a little bit of caramelization. This is what it looks like, by the way. It definitely has that mushy thing going on that I was not wanting, you know, the, the spongy thing, but maybe if I fry it up, It'll go away. I cut it open because I'm not gonna fry the whole thing right now. I'll just fry this piece 
and that is the inside texture. It honestly smells really good. It smells kind of like chickeny vegetable brothy. You know, it smells like it would be delicious. Okay, let's stick this in a pan. That sizzle was very unsatisfying. Okay, it's time for the culmination of my hard work. Here's my little cooked piece of seitan steak. It caramelized pretty well. Ta-da. Um, we're gonna see if it's all worth it. it smells very good. The taste is there. It's not exactly chewy enough that I'd call it a steak. But, you know, I would eat it as a meat portion on a plate, you know what I mean? So like a hunk of this, mashed potatoes, gravy, vegetables, that sort of thing. I can see it totally working. Mmm. Honestly, I thought I was gonna say that this isn't worth it, no matter, you know, how yummy it is because of all the effort you have to put in, but date night. I can see myself doing this for a special occasion. And so the average woman needs 40 grams of protein a day. One of those steaks has like 29 grams of protein. <laughs> so you could literally have one of those steaks and drink fruit smoothies for the rest of your day and you'd probably hit your protein goal, which is like pff, crazy. Seitan is nuts with the amount of like protein to calorie ratio. It's absolutely crazy. It was actually really good. Honestly, even with all the substitutions and stuff, nine out of 10, delicious. You should try it at home. It, it's not hard. It's just a little time consuming, that's all. But yeah, that's it. That's all I have for today. I hope you enjoy it. I'm a little bit afraid because the next meat substitute DIY thing on my quarantine list is banana peel barbecue park, pork. Banana peel pulled pork. Um, and that sounds disgusting, but I, I said I would do it, so I do have to do it. Um, so let me know uh, if you're excited to see that one. Uh, like if you like, subscribe if you want to subscribe. If you guys have a really good seitan recipe for me to try, or you have some tips for what I did wrong or right on this recipe, then just let me know in the comment section down below. And that is all I have for today. I'm definitely going to eat one of these steaks for lunch later on after I go on a little bike ride. I've been biking a lot lately, and it's a lot of fun. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram where I post every single day, I'll put my Instagram right here. And that's all I have for today. I will talk to you next time. Goodbye! By the way, this is the delicious lunch that I made with the seitan later on in the day. I did some mashed potatoes and peas and just sliced the seitan up. And the day after, the seitan actually firmed up a little more. So if you leave it in the fridge overnight, it does get firmer. All right, we could finally check this off the list. Boom. Shout out to all my patrons, but especially my bodega bosses and my OG bodega babes. Jessica, Christina, Marlene, Lucia, Alex Creates, Alan, Michelle, Laura, Kaylin, Marielle, Alex, the Planet Earth, Nicole, Juanita, Emily, Jenny, Marcia, Charles, Gemini, Curtis, Stacy, Janine, Michelle, Eduardo, Chloe, Erica, Danny, and Vanessa. You guys are the absolute best, and these videos are made possible with your support. If you want to support me non-monetarily, then just subscribe and stick around to watch another video. It shows YouTube that you like my content.